Okay, uh, welcome uh, and, and, and getting ready for, for preparations for uh, the next uh, Big 12 opponent in Oklahoma State. <clears throat> uh, you know, Sunday coming back to work, uh, uh, you know, we uh, took it easy on them just a little bit, uh, a little easier than we had. Uh, not to say that we're going to do that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but Sunday we did just a little bit. <clears throat> I think we're at that point in the season where we won't practice on Sunday nights. Uh, and we'll remain doing that for the rest of the season. That's that's fairly common. Uh, but did get uh, the Baylor game over with, you know, physical, uh, very physical game. One of the more physical games that I've, that I've seen uh, since I've been here. Uh, you know, had a lot of guys banged up and beat up. But uh, it's part of going into the eighth game it, it, as well. So uh, I, I basically asked the guys if they were satisfied with, with the win uh, and, and – and, or, you know, if they weren't satisfied with where they're at as a team right now, uh, unanimous, uh, not satisfied, want to continue to press forward and, and uh, try to uh, uh, keep, uh, keep uh, rolling on with where we're at in the Big 12 right now. You know, another Big 12 road game this weekend, challenging opponent. Uh, uh, guys have won eight to, eight to 11 games a year for the last five years or so, been to eight straight bowl games. We understand who our opponent is. We know a lot about them. <clears throat> and we know that they're going to be ready to play. Uh, no big, no game in the Big 12 is easy to play. It doesn't matter if you're playing at home. It doesn't matter if you're playing on the road. And to be quite frank, it really doesn't matter which of the nine other opponents it is. So uh, we 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 got to be ready to go, and I think our guys will. Uh, offensively, uh, you know, Coach Gundy's uh, been doing the same stuff offensively there for quite some time. Um, you know, is is gonna is gonna put good running backs out there. Is gonna be physical. <clears throat> you know, they got three guys at running back that they can put out there and and can get the job done. Desmond Rollins, a big physical back. Uh, Tyreek Hill, they'll put him in the backfield. They'll, they'll, they'll put him at receiver. They move him everywhere. One of the more dynamic guys I've seen is one of the faster guys I've ever seen. One of the more dynamic guys I've seen as well. <clears throat> uh, Dax Garman, their quarterback, is can, is is getting better. Uh, you know, the thing with him, and I know quite a bit about it, that he's an Oklahoma kid that, that moved to Texas, didn't play his senior year, uh, signed with Arizona, <coughs> redshirted, uh, didn't play, transferred to Oklahoma State, had to sit out a couple years. So hasn't played a lot of football and, and is continuously getting better. Uh, does a great job of throwing the deep ball. Probably the, mo the thing that concerns you more than anything is, is how accurate he is with deep balls. Uh, they got four or five receivers that are long and fast that can go get it. It's how they beat Texas Tech. Um, so that that's one thing that we're going to have to uh, be able to do a good job of is defending uh, defending their deep ball. Uh, defensively, uh, been doing the same stuff for quite some time. Same stuff that they were doing when I was there. Uh, Glenn Spencer is their DC, doing doing a, doing a really good job. I thought Oklahoma State had the best defense in the league a year ago. Uh, they've been hard to run the ball on. Uh, they're, they're hard to run the ball on this year. <clears throat> Got some new kids in the secondary. Uh, been giving up some plays in the pass game, as you guys well know. Uh, they'll probably benefit from getting a cornerback. Uh, you know, they lost uh, six, the Lampkin kid, who's a really good player. Played against us last year. Um, you know, they replaced him with a true freshman. You know, they got three or four guys in the secondary that are all <laughs> uh, true freshman to be, and and those guys will continue to get better. But they're getting the kid back. The 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 the, the word is is that he'll be back, so he'll give them a boost as well. Um, but they're 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 a good outfit. They 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 do a great job of stopping the run, as you all well know. We do everything we can to get the run game going. Uh, won't be any different this week. And when they put when they outnumber us in the box, we got to be able to throw the ball downfield. Uh, special teams wise, uh, uh, their return guy, obviously Hill. Uh, is as dynamic as anybody in the country. He ran right by Florida State. Uh, he won the game for him at Kansas. Uh, he, we, we, as we all know, <coughs> uh, ha have to focus hard on our, our coverage units, uh, which, which need to continue to get better. I thought our kickoff team last week was great. I thought our punt team was better. Uh, but that, that's going to be a big part of the game that we need to continue to get better at. So. Uh, we'll be challenging. We, we, we know it. We get it. We're ready to get back to work here today and uh, have a good week of practice to be able to uh, travel to Stillwater to play. And uh, it's going to be hot. Uh, it's, gonna, it's homecoming. It's going to be sold out. It's going to be loud. 
Uh, they're going to be in a. Uh, uh, they're going to be ready to play. <clears throat> you know, they they uh, didn't play very well a week ago at TCU. Um, you know, we got them last year, so they'll be ready to play. We we understand that. So with that, we'll take some questions. You mentioned that TCU game last week. Do you think that makes them more dangerous, tougher opponent heading heading into their <clears throat> this week? Well, I, in, on one sense, I mean, I, I, yeah, probably. But uh, the other the other side of that is is every game is going to be hard. You know, it doesn't matter, if, you know, what their record is. It doesn't matter, you know, who they played last week. We know who they are. We know they got good players. They got great coaches. They got great schemes. You know, they're they're last year they were very senior oriented, so they're replacing some guys because of graduation. Well, that's just college football. They've been recruiting well for the last decade. Uh, their facilities are awesome. Their location's awesome. So they're going to get good quality kids there. Uh, so regardless of what happened last week, regardless of what happened last year, if we don't have our, our, our guys ready to play, then we're not going to play well. <coughs> and they're, 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 they're capable of winning. Each and every game that we line up in, you know, we feel like we're capable of winning. But if we don't play well, we're going we're gonna to have our work cut out for us. Coach takes something from every stop along the way. What, what did you take out of your year at, uh, at Oklahoma State and working with Lee Gundy? Whew. That was about four years ago, Bob. Uh, you know, you know the, the, the one thing that, that – um, you know, I thought I, the organizational things, I, I, I took a little bit from each stop, you know, from, from each of the head coaches that I <clears throat> was under. I was fortunate to be able to be under some pretty good ones that, that have been pretty successful. Uh, you know, he, he's always been an old school uh, minded football coach. Okay, he, he was a quarterback, uh, tough kid. Um, you know, the Pat Jones was his head coach. He was an old school, uh, you know, just just play hard, play tough, play physical, play nasty. I mean, that 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 was what he was brought up in under Coach Jones. <clears throat> and and when I went to Oklahoma State, uh, our offense be started becoming more physical. Uh, there there is a lot of at Texas Tech where we were physical, but we we're always physical going backwards, you know, in pass protection and 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 stuff like that. Where where uh, with 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 his the way his offense was geared with Joe Wickline. And myself, it became a little bit more dig your hand down in the dirt and go forward, which is what you currently see. And I think okay, we... Did we see that in the uh, Bella game? Yeah. Did we see that in the Bella game this week? Did you? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. I, I, our offense, and, and they, that's the way they play. That's the way they play. They're physical, and, and they're a run first team, and they're going to punch you in the mouth. That, that's exactly what we did. Uh, it, 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 we're equipped to do that because of recruiting because of coaching because of scheme because of mentality <laughs> you know got some older kids up front uh, we, we were we were very, we were very physical we were as physical on Saturday as we've been in the four years that I've been here um, you know I'd like to think we started heading in that direction due to the fact that I was at Oklahoma State and that was the mentality that existed there you mentioned uh, that they're gonna try to stop the run first their secondary has has been giving up those big plays. Do you do you see a lot of opportunities for you guys to maybe even change gears from what you did this past week and and test that a little bit more? Oh it, yeah, if we need to, we better be able to do it. Uh, that that that's no different than any game. <clears throat> if we don't do a very good job of of running the ball because of we're not playing as physical as we need to because of what their scheme is 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 is, is trying to accomplished then we better be able to protect and throw the ball down the field you know that uh, uh, that's no different going into this game based on what their their uh, past defense stats are <coughs> as opposed to you know the first game of the year and what Alabama's past defense stats were you know you got to be able to you got to be able to take what the defense is giving you and being able to execute it I mean, he's had a number of offensive coordinators No, nah. right. <laughs> I mean, there, he knows that. He knows that. I mean, there, there's a zero percent chance I was leaving my post at Houston. <clears throat> had a had a good job for a good coach, and and had a good quarterback coming back. I was, 
I was I was interfered with none, and and he knows that, and that was part of the deal. Um, you know what I see on offense is is what I did when I was there, so I, I think he's had some guys come in <coughs> and do what the base was. How much has changed terminology? I I don't know, uh, but a lot of the the plays that they're running, a lot of the the tempo that they're using, a lot of the signals that they're using are the same ones that I used when I was there. Looks like teams have had some success getting to their quarterback. Is that a product of maybe a rebuild offensive line, or what's been going on there? Yeah, you know they're in some transition at that at that position as well. Uh, Joe Wickline was around there for a long time. Good friend of mine is at Texas. You know that that's that's uh, he's a good football coach. So. There, there, there was some transition with bodies. They're in some transition with uh, uh, the coaching staff as well, much like what we went through a year ago, you know, with, with some new bodies coming in, with Coach Crook coming in. Just takes time, for, you know, in order to uh, be able to be functioning at, on all cylinders, so to speak. So I'm sure they'll continue to get better and better. What did Saturday do for your guys' confidence? Oh yeah, I mean it, it, we're we're a pretty confident bunch defensively right now. Uh, you know, Coach Gibby again. I I, I can't uh, I can't express um, you know what what he's been able to do with the guys. I, I it's been it's been fun to watch. It's been awesome. Uh, he he uh, he he'll be the first to admit it's easier to call some of the schemes and some of the plays when the kids are coming to the sidelines giving him a bunch of confidence. You know, we had a great week of practice last week. Uh, the guys on the sidelines were tuned in, uh, were engaged, were, were encouraging Coach Gibby to run specific things, uh, which as a coach, that gives you confidence to be able to call specific things. Uh, getting to the quarterback a week ago was the key to the game. And, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can talk about the, uh, the man coverage, which was as good as I've seen since I've been here. Uh, we can talk about uh, the next guy in with depth. We, we, you know, KJ Dillon, Carl Joseph, Drayvon Henry all played their best game of the year. Covered, uh, tackled well. Uh, Ricky Rumpf, Icky Banks, uh, Chestnut Worley when they were in there. It's all good stuff. But in, unless you get to the quarterback, that does that does not matter. And we got to the quarterback. We sacked him four times. Shaq Riddick was awesome. Uh, Golson got there a couple of times, but some of the blitzes that Gibby called, guys got there and, and hit him, hit him early, with, which affected him uh, throughout the course of the game. Last year, the Oklahoma State game was Trickett's first start. Um, obviously, the injury and, and what happened after that changed things. But from what you've seen consistency out of him this year and, and just what he's been able to do, uh, I mean, how, how impressive has he been for you? Good. He's been great. He uh, he understands the game. <clears throat> he, he's, you know, we've watched the, that game from last year, and we weren't very good. I mean, it still was painful to watch. Uh, we won the game defensively. We played well last year against them. Uh, we did enough on offense. Charles Sims made some plays, uh, but we we weren't very good. You know, so he's he's night and day better than what he was. Uh, he he's he's consistent. Uh, he. Uh, <clears throat> is uh, running the offense. Uh, he's the steady guy. You know, when he when he turned the ball over twice in the first quarter, it didn't affect him. You know, he went out there and just kept playing and knew what he had to do in order to, to put ourselves, our guys in position to be able to win. Continues to develop a good working relationship with not only Kevin. That's easy to see. That's easy to write about and talk about. <clears throat> but him and Mario being on the same page, him and Dekeel and Jordan Thompson being on the same page is is pretty important. What's the best? Him thing? seeing run checks and getting us into run plays that are that that are that are that are important is is he's doing all that stuff really well. Is there a singular best thing that's standing out for him right now? In your no, eyes? no, no. I don't think so. I mean, he's just he's a steady guy. He's doing he's doing a lot of things right. Uh, so some of the things aren't flashy, but uh, so, you know, there's a lot of steady things out there that he's doing well. Speaking of data, he he had a lot going on. Yeah. Just from your perspective, what you found out at the, the end of the day, what, what did you see? What did you guys do? To, I, don't, I, I don't know if he's going to serve that and maybe help the group get a win. He, he, was, he was fine. I mean, he had a 24 hour bug. I mean, I just I told him Michael Jordan did it so he could do it. You know, if you're sick and go out there and play well, then what's the big deal? It's a little stomach bug, you know. 
Uh, well, that, yeah, that, that we had a we had a conversation after the game. You know, he he found out his mom was here and. And, and they, they talked about it after the game, but at that point, Rick was in a good place. He, he was fine. Uh, they, they had to watch him because he was yelling at the computer and, you know, all that. So they, they were, they were, I mean, you know, they were all disappointed he couldn't coach in his game that night. And I'm like, if that's all you're worried about, then everybody's in a good place. <clears throat> Did anything surprise you about the way the Big 12 uh, race unfolded and well, you can't worry about that. That's happening in some of these other leagues too. You know, I mean, the, the, you know, we're 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 pretty fortunate to be in a in, in, one, in a Power Five conference where they're all the teams are good. <clears throat> it makes it fun. Makes it challenging for coaches. Makes it challenging for players. Makes it makes it fun and exciting for the fan base. Um, it, it's good for college football. I think it's going to continue to head that way, just because of the parity that exists out there. Um, you know what, what what it looks like now. I doubt it looks like that at the end of the year. You know, as far as what the rankings are and the uh, the, the teams that are projected to be in or any of that. I can't worry about any of that. Uh, we're we're <clears throat> we're not going to worry about where we're at in the standings. Uh, we're not going to worry about where we're at in the rankings. You know, all we're worried about is is preparing for Oklahoma State and 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 trying to be in a good spot at the end of the week. You know, the goal is is on Saturday after the game to be in a good place. That, that's all we can worry about right now. That's all we can control, and that's all we're going to worry about. Dana, that's a, <clears throat> a huge win for the, for your team on uh, against Baylor, and uh, you can see it in the excitement of the players after the game players and so forth that is what is the coaching staff have to do anything this week to really refocus the team back to Oklahoma State to come away from that big victory well I, that's our job that's our job you know so we, we better you know and you know I, I I think if we had a very young and mature team then that would be a huge challenge uh, you know we have a very experienced uh, older team that that likes each other that plays hard for each other <clears throat> that understands what what we're trying to accomplish and and really what we're trying to accomplish is, is to win the next game i don't i don't i don't know i don't know any other way of approaching it with the team um, you know and i think we got a lot of guys that have a lot of experience that went through a lot last year that went through a lot two years ago uh, that want to be in a good place at the end of the week a lot. Yeah, a lot. I mean, they, they, they understand what's ahead of us. <clears throat> you know, the same, the same, you know, what I thought was a key to winning the Texas Tech game was the fact a lot of our guys had been to Lubbock and they understood what it was about. Well, those same guys have been to Stillwater and they understand what, what's there. They understand the facilities, the recruiting, <clears throat> the quality of player, uh, the atmosphere, uh, you know, they know it's going to be challenging. And, and, and again, the overall goal is, is to be in a good place at the end of the week. So you better do your, what you're, what, you better do what you're supposed to on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in order to make that happen. It's only been a day, but any update on the, the guys who left last week's game and didn't come back, you still expect them to possibly play this week? Yeah, there, there, I, it, there's going to be, there's probably going to be a few that play. There's probably going to be a few that don't. That, that all de that's all dependent on, and we haven't had a practice with them since. So I, I haven't seen them outside. Uh, we'll probably have five or six guys in green jerseys today, <clears throat> uh, that which means non-contact. Uh, hopefully that progresses to contact guys tomorrow. It's the best I got for you at this point. Nobody's been ruled out. Nobody's long term, and and, and that that that's good news for us. Uh, you know, because it was such a physical game, because guys got knocked out of the game, uh, I would, yeah, and you know this based on, on, on previous experiences, if anybody was long term, I'd tell you, nobody's long term. Does that force you to go even deeper into your quarterbacks than you have? Uh, maybe. You know, uh, the only, you know, Nana uh, got some snaps a week ago and will continue to get some snaps. Uh, he was elevated. Uh, a couple weeks ago, from the scout team to the <clears throat> to the to the to the big leagues, uh, probably do the same thing with Keyshawn Richardson this week, uh, just to give us some more depth there.
You can only travel 70, though. So, I mean, we're at that. We've been, we've been in a good place right there and expect us to be able to travel 70 as well. Do the Golden State uh, use Tyreek Hill at all similar to how you used to use Kayvon Austin? Yeah, very similar. Uh, you see him in the backfield a good bit. <clears throat> you see him in slot going downfield. He runs some underneath option routes. Um, and then, you know, both kick and punt return. So you're very similar, yes. You put in that punt return that the Rams used this week? If we had two of them, we probably would. <laughs> two? If we had two of them, we probably would. We'll start searching for one. Dana, um, being ranked for the first time since October 2012, does that mean anything to you? Nah, it's, I mean, it's positive for the program. It's good for national, you know, recognition. I mean, all that, all that's good. I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. That's all good for the program. <clears throat> Probably gets us talked about more and gives us more national recognition, like I said, but it, it doesn't adjust anything that we do. You know, we're not, we're not uh, satisfied with where we're at. We're not interested in people telling us that we're good or any of that. We, 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 we got to just keep doing our job. When you talk about playing a very physical game, that kind of says that Cody Clay had a big role. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what you did this week and, and what he's meant? Thought he had his best game two weeks ago against Kansas. Uh, thought he had his best game to date on Saturday against, uh, against Baylor. Uh, he's just a consistent, uh, uh, hardworking, high effort, high motor, uh, great leader. Uh, he, he does everything the right way. Um, you know, and he's only a junior, but he's played a lot of ball for us. You know, he, <clears throat> looking back at what he did two years ago against Oklahoma State, I think he took about 60 snaps against Oklahoma State two years ago. Um, but, but just keeps getting better. You know, you can use him a lot of different ways. You can put him in slot. You can put him at tight end. You can put him in the backfield. Uh, he, he's a sixth offensive lineman. He can be a, a, a receiving, I wouldn't say threat, uh, but target. Um, and then he can run the ball for the average of five yards a carry, which he did like one time this year. So he does a lot of good things. Eli Wellman's doing some good stuff as well. He got in there probably 10, 12, 15 reps last week and is will thump you. So uh, two kids cut from the same cloth that are doing great things for us. Great, thanks, Coach. All right, thank you all.